Hello everybody and welcome back. Today we will begin chapter 2 in physics which talks about sound waves. And the first point that we have in our chapter is the sound reflection. So first, what are sound waves? Sound waves are waves which are produced due to the vibrations of uh, objects. For example, like the tuning fork. It produces vibrations in the forms of compressions and rarefactions. Compressions and rarefactions. So these wave waves spread in a medium like air, water, or any other medium till they uh, reach the ear. The ear picks up these waves and they translate them into sound waves in order to distinguish between the sounds. So, as the sound waves travel in the form of compressions and rarefactions, we can conclude that sound waves are transverse waves. So, sound waves are transverse waves. This is the first point. Now we can talk about the uh, sound reflection. So, if we have a vibrating source at that point, the sound waves travel from around this vibrating source in the form of concentric circles. So, the black lines are the uh, compressions and the dotted lines are the rarefactions. So, the sound waves travel in the form of concentric circles. When these concentric circles hit an object, for example, here, there's an object, The waves are reflected as if they are distant from this object the same distance they are far from the vibrating source. What this means is here if we complete the part here the wave hits the object at that part. So what happens is the waves are reflected back that way. As if there was a vibrating source in here. So that the distance between um, these two points is equal to the distance between these two points. This is the point of sound reflection. There are um, some fundamentals or laws of sound reflection. First, angle of incidence equals angle of reflection. So simply if you have a surface like that and a sound ray fill, it will be reflected like that so that this angle, which is called the angle of incidence, 
because it's the angle where the uh, sound ray is incident on this surface is equal to the uh, angle of reflection because this is the angle where the ray is reflected they both are equal in measure this is the first law the second law is is that the angle of incidence the angle of reflection and the normal to the point of incidence lie all in one plane. It means that they are drawn all on the same um, horizontal plane. So we'll explain this right now. First, what's the normal? If the surface had some points which are pointing upward, another depressions like that, so it's not um, equal in height. If a sound ray fell like that and it was reflected this way, and uh, as we have just said, angle of incidence equal the angle of reflection, but here the uh, surface is not equal. This part, we cannot uh, measure an angle from here. So what we do is draw a horizontal line so that this angle is equal to this angle. This is the normal. So we can notice the normal here is inclined a little bit, but if we drew a perpendicular line on the normal, we can find that um, this angle equals this other one. And this is how we apply the sound reflection though. So if another incident ray fell like that and was reflected this way, so the uh, normal will be inclined in the other uh, position. So that the angle of um, incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. Finally, this arrow that we draw represents the direction of propagation. of the sound wave and it's called the sound ray so this sound ray doesn't um, doesn't express the sound wave itself but it only expresses the direction of propagation of this sound wave because we have just said that sound waves are transverse waves which struggle in the form of compressions and rarefactions, so we cannot draw them in the form of an arrow. But this arrow only detects the direction of propagation of the sound waves. So this is it for today, and the next time we will talk about the sound refraction. And until then, I thank you for watching and see.